Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, I'm Medina and in today's video we are going to a road trip to Croatia which is going to take for 6 days and I'm just going to show you that what are the best spots if you want to go for some trip and as you can see right behind me going to travel with this motorhome, camper van, RV, it doesn't matter how you call it so it's going to be super fun if you're new to the channel don't forget to hit the subscribe button right now so you're not going to miss any of the upcoming videos and right now let's hit the road Let me introduce you to the travel sparkheads. Right now I'm traveling with my parents. You can see my mom over there. Woo, say hello. And here on the other side my dad is driving. Hello. So three of us is heading right now to Croatia. So we're going to spend the first day mostly with traveling. Right now we are already on the road and we have around 750 kilometers to go from Budapest down to Trogir. It's going to take around roughly 7-8 hours for us probably a little bit longer than with a regular car as we are moving a little bit more slower with this uh, bigger motorhome. Uh, but yep, this is what you can expect if you are leaving your home with car. You have to spend so many time on the road, but it's going to be worse. In Croatia, you have to pay for the motorway right on the road. Uh, beginning of the motorway, we get a ticket. And right now, when we ended uh, this distance, what we went, we needed to pay at the end. Right now we are having a little bit of pit stop with some toilet break and grabbing some food and after we are continuing our journey. We just came down from the highway and right now we made our second payment which was 35 euros. So right now in total we paid 44 euros uh, to reach the sea uh, and I think this is pretty pricey. We are already in Trogir. In a few minutes we're going to arrive to our campsite. Uh, but we basically didn't book, but uh, checked it on the internet and over there looked pretty. So I hope it's going to be fun. Alright, so we just arrived to Camping Belader and I must say that already from the first look it says that this is not some shitty camping. This is actually a four-star camping with so many equipment and right now we will go into the roads and check out that which is the uh, camping site what we like the most and we can park there. Of course because it's shoulder season, it's not so crowded yet, so basically right now we can choose what we want. So we just spent 9 hours on the road but it was so worse guys, right now OMG the view from the campsite is so sick, look at this, oh, the sea is just front of us, if we're going to open the door we're going to see it and we can just sitting over there and eating and I don't know. Oh, it's so cool! <laughs> right now we are just preparing some small grilling in here as we already pretty hungry, we didn't eat that much all day. And that's going to be all for today as right now almost 9 pm. But tomorrow when you're going to wake up I will show you the camping site, all the camp around and we will also make some van tours. So stay tuned. See you! Good morning guys, just woke up from our first night in here in the camper van and right now let me show you that how does it look like when I'm opening the door. Whoa! My parents are already having coffee over there and it just looks so so beautiful. Alright, so right now let me give you a little bit of tour around the camping. As we came with a camper van, we could choose from three types of campsites, from A, B and the premium version. Right now we are in the premium section and that's the most expensive of course because it's right next to the sea. But at the moment it's really worse because it's only 26 euros per night. But in peak season this can go above 60 euro per night. So in that case maybe it's worth to think about uh, if it's really good to stay there or not. Uh, also, if you're just coming with your regular car, you have many options. You can stay in a luxury apartment and glamping tents and all of them look good. The toilets and showers are very clean and around the camping there are so many facilities. 
they have their own store, restaurant, bar. You can rent bikes, there are tennis courts, also pools, and uh, you can go down to the beach. So there are so many things. Uh, this is really not sponsored, we just came in here for the first time. But I think it's really beautiful, so I recommend you to check it out if you are coming to the area. Trogir is only 5 km away from the camping, so right now we're going to grab the bikes and let's go into the city. On a road like this I would ride my bike every day even if I'm a not big biker but right in here next to the shore it's so wonderful uh, in here I just wanted to come up in here on the road and unfortunately I fell it so I broke my clothes and yeah I'm everywhere cold in my lipstick uh, I also have my marks on my hand, but fortunately nothing serious, so Yeah, take care guys when you are biking. This is the reason why it's not my favorite type of sport Each year and a little bit hurt, so Sorry for this content. Okay, so this was a load and painful trip But we just arrived to the old town of Trogir. The gate is just right behind us and at the moment my right arm is basically out of order I can't break with it, I can't make big movements uh, so I bet this is going to hurt tomorrow but no worries, anyway I will try to show you the best of Trogia right now Trogir itself a small city, you can walk inside the walls but you can also coming out to here to the marina and walk just in here next to the sea watching the boats, they are just super nice and also you can check out the castle behind me which was built in the 13th century to save Trogir. Another interesting fact of the old town is that you cannot find in here any building which is younger than 100 years old. Inside the old town you can find so many souvenir shops, coffees, bars, restaurants and tiny tiny and sweet narrow streets. Uh, also there are so many olive trees and you can see citruses. So this whole uh, small city has a very very nice atmosphere. So I highly recommend you to come here to Trogir. Right now we are in the main square and in here you can find so many sites. You can see the St. Lawrence Cathedral and on the other side you can find find the loggia what is basically the city hall and also the clock tower so these are one of the most important sites in here and there are a cute coffee where you can sit out and just get a drink when you are already tired of walking you can walking up here to the tower of the cathedral and from here you will have a spectacular view to the city for only 30 kuna Good morning guys, this is day 3 and we are back in Trogir and we will go to a boat excursion with this boat in here right behind me. Uh, we came down here to the city by taxi. I want to tell you this because originally we wanted to come by bus but it came out that the bus has no schedule actually. You can check when it's uh, departing from the first town but then you just can kind of figure out that when it's going to arrive to you and it's also uh, not going very frequently so I must say that this is not a reliable option if you have to go somewhere for an appointment. So this is the reason why we took the taxi. What was kind of pricey it was uh, 125 kuna uh, for 10 minute ride so yeah this is what you have to expect in here uh, the public transport is not so nice we have 10 minutes until boarding the boat and right now I just get some cream in the pharmacy for my arm because it's still very strong and uh, it's hard to move so mom is sweet and put it on it
We already left the shore and right now on a three island tour. Uh, the tour costs 300 kuna per person and this is basically a whole day trip. Uh, we left the shore like 9.30 and we will arrive back at 5. We just arrived to the Blue Lagoon where you can see the water is crystal clear. Unfortunately, right now we're not going to stop as the weather is too cold for swimming. But if you're coming on the summertime, this can be a stop where you can uh, jump out, snorkel and enjoy the water. We just have stopped on Salta Island and right now we have around one and a half hour to explore this small area. Salta is basically a small island very close to Split and there aren't too many things around but you can come here for a day trip, there are a few sweet fishing villages and also the water is crystal clear and there are so many boat trips and catamarans are also coming to here there is also a luxury hotel on the island so this is what you can expect from this small place so this is the deepest how we went into the water right now as it's still fucking cold here we are at the last stop of the day, that is Duga Bay and I think this is also supposed to be good during summertime because there are a few beaches so you can go to swim. Right now we just have one hour to go around and explore it, uh, maybe we can sunbait a little bit but uh, that's also for what I see. This is supposed to be a three island tour but basically we had only two stops and maybe during summertime when you can also go to swimming uh, these stops can be better but right now that we are mostly on trips it could be better to change the itinerary probably. Basically it was picked three destinations, it wasn't uh, so many interesting things to do. Uh, we also get some fish for lunch, which was fine, but we get the cheapest drinks on board. The toilets were dirty. It was super cold, it was super windy. So yeah, honestly, this wasn't the best boat tour of our life. I can't recommend you. I also know that they are offering five uh, island tour, which is cost around 100 and 120 euros. But after this, I'm also not sure that's the worth the price. So yeah, that's all what I can tell and we're going to continue from here. Good morning, it's day 4 and we're starting our day again eating outside in here with the sea view. It's so super, it's truly unbeatable. This day is all about relaxing. Right now we just visited the supermarket of the camping where you can get all the essentials, not only food but also camper stuff. And we came down to the beach to enjoy this beautiful weather and sunbathing a little bit. Then tested the ice cream of the camping's bar. The quality is family approved. Alright, so I promised to you that we're going to have a little bit of Ventur and I needed to delay it with a few days because of my arm but right now I'm a little bit better so right now let's go inside. So as you can see the front is like for the regular car, you can see in here the driving area and one other person can sit next to it and after in here right behind me there is a small living room. In this small living room section we can uh, sit down together and eating and also in here on the other side you can see a little bit of kitchen there is a normal size fridge what is super cool and if we are going a little bit more inside on the left hand side you will see the bathroom what is actually right now just used as a storage as at the moment we can use the shower of the camping on the right side there is the toilet let me show you 
Okay, so here is a toilet with a small sink and a mirror. Hi! So this is what we have in here. And if we continue the trip to the end of the van, we can find kind of the bedroom where two person or even three can fit easily. So yeah, this is how does it look like. And if you want me to create a full video about this van, just let me know in the comment section because there are so many uh, hidden spots inside and so many creative ideas how they solve things in a van like this. So if you want, I will create another video for you about it. Alright guys, so let me quickly summarize for you the last four days what it actually didn't went on the way as we expected. First of all, I had my tiny uh, bike accident which wasn't planned and of course it's made things a little bit harder as I still just can move my right arm with my left, but it's fine. And other thing was the boat tour, which wasn't bad, but as I told for you, I just cannot recommend it. It wasn't really the boat tour of our life. And the third thing is that transportation in here in Croatia is not easy. If you don't have a car, it's really hard to get from A to B, even if our, these are not big distances. Right now, we just want to go down from the camping to Trogir, which is only five, six kilometers away. But the options are really tough bike can be one option but there are no bike roads at all you just can ride next to the cars or there was another way when we came back but that was a pedestrian way so in summertime when there is full of people i'm not sure if it's working uh, as i told for you uh, the bus has no schedule so basically that's totally unreliable taxi was pretty expensive but that can be an option and on the way back when we wanted to come back from the boat tour i tried to catch a uber and it was around five different drivers who accepted my ride then cancelled it so we needed to wait pretty long until one really came and picked up us and bring us back in here to the camping so basically these were the points uh what wasn't so nice so far in the tour but we have two more days left uh what i will show you in the next video we're going to visit the uh, split and the uh, lake Plitvica, so i think it's going to be versus to check also the next video if you enjoyed today's one then don't forget to hit the like button also subscribe to the channel and we're going to explore new places next week in the next video see you